Y'all know I'm spitting the truth when I be up in this room With the political, but cynical, I'm speaking to you Like you do, do, three point zero Underground hero, when you're a beating hero They heard of me in Germany, I'm permanently embedded in this I'm minimalist, I give them a twist Was underrated, now I don't give a shit I'm on a path to my success, how about even get rid of Lucky 3.0 if you want to hold on to that lucky shit. Uh, lucky I am is retired. Uh, I'm, it's a new birth, man. I'm a new nigga, so I can't be holding on to that shit. Uh, management advised me not to change Lucky I am because I've already been Lucky I am PSC. I've been PSC. I've been on this other shit. So they're like, it'll be fucked up for sales if I change my name all the way. But nigga, if you know me and you talk to me, don't fucking come up to me with no Lucky I am PSC shit or none of that bullshit. I'm three, big point out. Fucked around and leveled up? Yeah, <laughs> leveled up on your asses. Nigga, you heard that, you bitch ass Instagram niggas. Not y'all. But the rest of them. I uh, We got a special guest in the house. What's your That's name, man? That's right. My name's Almaza, the diamond, the diamond in the rough, a.k.a. Maz. <laughs> Maz is in the building, y'all. Um, I want to talk to you because um, I met you a long time ago, right? It was like back in 08. At a show, I asked you for a dollar. You were behind me, and I was like, oh, shit, it's luck. And then what I do? You said no. Nah, you gave me the fucking dollar. Come you on, were man. drunk. You don't remember that shit. <laughs> I, remember I just that made shit. an Instagram last week and started following, and now I'm here. What's oh, up? See, <laughs> see, yeah. Have a pretty face and get my DMs. It helps. You might end up on blue. No, why you're here is because um, you told me something very interesting about yourself. Uh, first of all, tell go. your journey. Where uh, where were you born? Where you came from? What's up? I'm from Palms in West LA. But right. I'm a Venice kid. Right. Grew up around there, you know, skateboarding and shit, but. Um, like you said, all around the world. Uh -huh. I'm from planet Earth. What's, what's your national? Why you have that brown skin like that? I'm half Lebanese, and I'm not going to try to sound exotic, half white. <laughs> but that's but, exotic. You got some Lebanese in you. But you know what? That's really cool that you nicknamed me Maz because my dad's name is Mazin, and we call him Maz. And in our culture, in Arab culture, you take your father's name as your middle name. For example, my grandfather's name is Hussein. So my father, Mazin, his middle name is Hussein, but he had to... Remove that completely after 9 11 because every time he got stopped, Whoa, every time he went Hussein, to the airport, oh, just damn. like, and you know what? All of my family have Hussein in their name yeah. because it's your first name, then Hussein, and then Yatim, my last name. It means orphan. So people are so ignorant. All my friends on Facebook are like, yo, are you related to Saddam Hussein? Because like they say Hussein Hussein, like, that's such a common name. <laughs> you know why, people. Miles, uh, so you grew up here, man. Um, what, what what happened to you recently? How does how did how? Because what you told me, I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna let you tell it. It kind of got out of hand. Like what what happened? You was living your life, and then what happened at home? What made you bounce real quick? And she's a young woman. She's like, what you like? 25? I'm 25. So what happened? When did the problem start with you? When I came up out the womb. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I you know. Not one of those like white girls. Oh, I had a hard home life, but I really did. I was always running away, and um, you know I always held it together. Though hip hop saved me, is that it raised me, and uh, I always kept it together. She's a young person that I, listens to us. That's right. Uh, for half my life, since I was in middle school, I've been coming to shows, stealing cars, coming to y'all shows. Like <laughs> she's a, she, she GTA. I, she showed me the mug shop from my Miami, dude. Broward County. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pork and beans projects. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to so, uh, forty eight hours. More thorough, I, she more thorough than the fake Rick Ross. First forty eight. I fuck with the legends though. So um, yeah, I mean, you even broke out, out of a, you broke out of a group home to come to the <clears throat> wait. How'd you go to the Christmas oh, that's show? Right. What'd you do? <laughs> at wait, the what'd Novo. you do at the Novo? I was How'd at you a, get there? I was at a sober living home for the first time in my life. You know, fuck those places. It's like people are there to like be clean, apparently, but they're just junky as shit. They stole all my art, my book of rhymes. Just like fuck that place. So I was over it, and they're like, you know, if you fuck up again, I had just gone in like a couple weeks, and I have a problem with authority, so I was. You know, already doomed, but fuck them, <laughs> fuck um, you, fuck you, know, you have a curfew there, and I was like, "Fuck this shit! I'm going to the show." And um, I took I took the bus, and uh, I went there by myself. I rocked it, and I was just getting down harder than anyone there on the side. You know, sweating. I oh, no. like to dance. She left. She broke out of sober living to come to a living legend show. But fuck, fuck I you, mean, niggas! You ever did that shit? So no bitch ass <laughs> niggas. Hey, so you're back to your question about right, what, what happened, happened to me. So I didn't have nowhere to go after that. You know, because I, I was staying at a place, like I said, I'm from Palms, I'm from Motor in Venice. Motor and, Yard. And um, the dude, the, the, rent, the rent, when I moved back from Miami, the rent done shot the fuck up over there because I guess the expo line that they put. Yep. So my rent, like I was renting, I used to have a studio like for five years, it was my genie lamp, people called it. But um, 
you know, wait till you meet me. I'm all mystical and shit. But <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I ain't let nobody um, meet you. Come on, go ahead. What happened? So, you know, when I moved back, I wanted to go back to my same block. And just for a master bedroom, I used to pay 900 for a studio. Just for a master bedroom was 1200 So, you know, I, you know, I can't even get into, like, what I went through recently to lead me to this. But I just started doing drugs. What drugs? Basically. What drugs? You want to know my DLC? Yeah. Um, Drug of choice, yo. Call it speedball, but I Oof. don't shoot coke. I shoot crack. She you shot know. crack cocaine. Hey, here's nigga. a funny little aside for you. Um, I, I spoke at a CA meeting recently. And I just wanted to fuck with them. I was the only white person in there. And I got up, and I'm trying to seem all meek and timid. I'm like, I smoked crack one time, and I didn't like it. And I'm, like, watching them roll their eyes in their head, right? And then I'm like, and then I banged that shit up, and I couldn't fucking stop. <laughs> Uh, what does anyway, that mean? That means like you, you shoot you shoot it. If you bang something, you shoot it. So you start shooting crack cocaine. Where's crack the first, crack where's with the, with tar, you know. Crack so. with tar. Oh, you mix that shit together. It's like my an nigga? orgasm. It does. I mean, let's not talk about that. I'm no, no, I, no. Oh, I don't mean to get you high. <laughs> I'm I'm clean though. I'm, I've been clean okay. and sober. For how long? Um, I just took my thirty day trip yesterday at my thirty home day meeting. trip. Congrats. That's right. I got Congrats. a ton of those. I'm telling you the truth though. That combination, I'm gonna do that shit like right when I hit seventy years old, nigga. <laughs> right. If I find out I was dying, nigga, I'd like do hell. So, of that shit. um, so yeah. So when I when I moved back, so yeah, I was doing drug. I was going to CSUN and fall semester and fucking going to school and doing dope, ha having a dope habit is hard as shit. So I dropped out, you right. know, for the second time right, and dropping out of right. school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I started doing things for money that I would Almaza would never do. Like you know, what? That was another person. Like what? Yo, <laughs> Start I, would, pussy. I, I was always riding Motor Avenue. I would like have a lemonade stand looking who she oh, has shit. The uh, tricks would just pull up and I would take them in my house right there and like. Whoa. Shit. <laughs> doing funny turning shit. Turning like tricks that. Yeah, from the lemonade stand, nigga. And that's just when I, it was convenient at my house. But you know, I was on the blade a couple places. And what blade? Explain to them so, what the blade is because the these niggas going to uh, break out the urban dictionary. What's the blade? <laughs> Save y'all stuff right here. Come on. Uh, it's a track. I was over on Sepulveda. I was on Fig. Um, Western. Western Adams. I know Western. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I fucked around and, and got caught up with the undercover. And, um, you know, I got lucky in court. They just looked at me and they're like, you don't belong here. I'm like, I fucking don't. And, um, you know, so after, so, okay, so I got, that's not me. It only went down like that, like, Maybe a month I lasted because that's not me. Somebody and get her Lebanese, some tissue, man. Lebanese are very proud, you know. Yeah. Like, if any of my family found out about this, like, I would be disowned. So I really hope they don't listen to Dash Radio. No, they but don't. <laughs> no one listens to this show at all. <laughs> well, they are now. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, um, you know, oh, like, I just, that, that shit just dug me deeper wait, in a did, hole hold up. within did myself. Did you get to the skid before? Or no, after I'm going to get to that. Well, okay. you know, I've been fucking around going down there, but I, was, I would always go back, you know, home to my place. Right. And then, so I didn't have. I got tired of, you know, like, um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's okay, babe. Um, we got you, man. You know, th there's a there's a quote by um, your homie Grouch that um, so would have never paid the price if I knew this was the cost. That shit right. hits me deep because right. I was paying the price for that expensive rent, but at what cost? That shit was eating me alive. So I, like, humbled myself, swallowed my pride, went to that sober living. Um, <clears throat> Where did the fuck? I would, go. I would shout them out, but I'm not a shit talker happens. like you. What the, the what the fuck is it about? I'm sorry. What is it about <laughs> di naming somebody? He's right DJ? there, bro. He's right there, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. You're such oh, a shit, shit talker. Did you hear what I just say? I would shout out, fuck that sober living, and say their name, but I'm not a shit talker like you. I just said that, but you weren't listening. You were such a shit talker. You were so stupid. <laughs> I'm not just a shit talker. I'm a shit handler. <laughs> all right. Roasted. Well, okay. okay, like I'm saying, my point is you can be many different things. We all have many layers, as they say. So... Um, yeah. you know, I got, I got kicked out of that place and then I had nowhere to go. Um, I mean, I could have gone home, but I vowed when I left at 16, I would never go back. Right. Um, so I, I, I knew everybody I would get dope, you know, off the skid because the reason you started dope is cause you hooked up with that nigga from Miami. It's always a dude. Man, it's always some <laughs> punk ass dude, man. What? Come on. Take us. Why? <laughs> what? He was, he's the one that started you doing dope, huh? Well, you know, uh, I had a stillborn child and, uh, um, you know, it's okay. Everyone says I'm sorry, but it's okay. You know, um, it's my guardian angel because I had tried to kill myself more times than years I have life. And I feel like energy doesn't just evaporate. It's, you know, it reciprocates. It is, it, you know, so that's my guardian angel. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Ro Ro, my little Roman. Shout anyway, out, so. Rest in peace, Roman. <laughs> God love um, for you, man. 
Thank you. Thank you. So anyway, um, you know, I would get my dope down there because, like I said, I need two things. I would be straight up dope sick and people think I'm crazy. Like I would have the dope and not even touch it until I got the hard. That's crack for Whoa. you guys that don't I, know. It's like, you're like, I got some dope, but I'm not about to shoot this till I get my crack. I'm you, telling you. You have your taste and you tell me well, the let thing me tell you, with like, the lemon. Sometimes, yeah, that's right. It's not water soluble, so you got to bust it down with lemon. But, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, you know, is it worth being this attractive? I don't mean to be vain. I'm not vain. You know, my, my family and my people giving me hate for having an Instagram now and flexing like, oh, you know, that's not you. You're humble. You're not, you know, your beauty doesn't usually ask for attention like that. I'm like, bitch, I used to live in a fucking tent. Like, let me flex a second. My mom's like, what does that mean? I'm like, let me stunt. She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, never mind, mom. Stunt on these. <laughs> anyway, Jeez, but, um, girl, girl. you know, so, yeah, that shit was not cool. Um, it was the, ra- the rainiest fucking season we ever had. Yeah. And um, I I, my, my shoes and socks were soaking wet for days. I had to ask. I didn't have any fucking quarters rubbed together for the bus. I had to always humbly ask them to let me ride at night just to stay warm. Um, and it's just fucking, it's a, um, it's a merry-go-round. It's fucking sickening. Like, you are, know, you it, talking it about, is, are you talking about the scare? I'm just talking, man, we can talk, uh, like, what exactly you want to know? Because there's I some, to, I know you're into that project that you're doing, that nonprofit, right? That's why you want to talk about it. I haven't it. announced it yet, but thank you for, like, blowing my cover. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, Leak. Leaked here I, first. Well, okay, let me just speak on this. <clears throat> I don't talk about this shit. I don't fucking post it on my gram. I don't fucking try to put it out there, but. One of the things I want to do is have through 3.0 Productions. I want to have a 3.0 Foundation that's going to be a nonprofit to help people who've been displaced or immediately get out on the street. Like people who, like people who just like slipped up and like just kind of got in a situation where you're like homeless and shit. Because there are over 800,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. That's right. A lot. It's fucking tent cities and some fucking um, city of God shit happening in certain areas and and. I, one of the things, if you know about me, I get up in the morning and I ride my bike from, from the hood to fucking Santa Monica Pier to go to my church, uh, Equinox. And on my travels, one of the things that I've been doing is like, I see all these homeless people out there in the streets. And what I do is I don't just ride past them. I stop and I chop it up with fools. I like, I like give people money. I, um, Some of the give smartest them, individuals. Give them food. How you doing, bro? Just recording right now. Shabazz, nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Welcome, welcome. Nice yeah, welcome. We got a guest, Shabazz the OG, in. up in the so building. I stop. I, I like, you know, I can't just ignore people like that. I like give them some money. Like, not just giving them money. Like, give them, um, oh, what is it? Uh, Common courtesy. Like, just treat them like humans. Like, I speak to them. Why is it uh, called common courtesy if it's so rare? <laughs> well, you know? uh, it's just it's a thing. Well, supposed this to be is like common. common. Yeah, it's supposed to be common courtesy. Like, I speak to them, try to give them some food, some help. Just show them that, like, I can't be out here and see people in that kind of condition and just ignore them and then try to act like I'm a good person because there are a lot of people who pretend like they're like all spiritual and woke and shit, but they constantly ignore people who, and they don't realize that them themselves, if they didn't have family members or friends that could hold them down, motherfuckers are running around here one emergency away from fucking being homeless. You're like one thing that could happen that one thing could happen in your life and it could offset something and next thing you know, you can't pay your rent or you can't do this and that and you'll be out on them streets. So that's why the, you being on the skid, like I was very interested. I'm like, how, cause I remember like, I looked at you and I'm like, your face and everything. How did a person like that looks like you survive on skid row for six months? Well, first thing I did is uh, cut my hair off. It's to be long hippie hair. You know, I'm a surfer girl. Right. And, um, you know, some, so, man, I got stories like a fucking skyscraper, bro. It's like every time you bring something up, I got like mental tabs, like, boop, 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 where'd I go? Well, um, uh, how? Okay, how? well, so I come. How did you defend I, yourself? Because I know you got a, a t- people are trying to rape you and shit like well, that. Yeah, that shit is yeah, city it happened, of God. It ha- you know, statistically, you can't always get so lucky. It's going to happen sometimes. Um, I actually, you're a fighter, right? No. Okay, I thought you said we have enough fighter. He got the TMT. No, he's from the money. He's team, on the though. team. Yeah, he's, he's on, on the, the fighters okay. team. Okay, well, you he's know, a, wait. He is a fighter because he's a oh, black shit. man in America, so he's definitely a fighter. And he's, <laughs> a, he's a survivor of anything. Well, you I mean, know, no. To survive in my home, um, actually, it was J Lo that inspired me when I seen that movie. Enough, I was like, I want to do that shit. I love this one line: "Body like J Lo after she had enough." <laughs> but I went and took uh, women's self defense classes because my stepdad's an alcoholic. He's a, from the fucking south. 
you know, he crazy. So he, we were always uh, getting beaten on in the house, and I just got sick of that face. shit. You need to hit him in the face with a Coke can. Uh, Bear needs a soda. Um, <laughs> Straight up. That happened That's on the family vacation. But. All right, but wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Did you like? Did you like? How? How did you like keep fools up off of you? Um, I can fight, like I'm saying. So, so did you, you have to use it? You used it? Did you use it? I mean, cause yeah, you cause know, I was just DJ, you know what? the new DJ Nig. He is a recovering addict. Himself. Oh, that's what's up. He's reco- in recovery, and he went down. We're there. all in recovery. He went down there, <laughs> and he um. He told me he got in like a few tussles down there just from being La- down there on the skid. Last time and I was I, down there. He, uh, shot, what did you see last time you was on the skid? I mean, I saw Amsterdam. I went down there and I felt like it was something out of the wire where it's like they're allowing a whole separate society with its own rules and systems. And I seen, also I seen own young, ecosystem. Yeah, I seen young dudes down there like looking yoked, just seeming like, all man, kinds. they're running this shit. There's yeah. young dudes, thug dudes down there that Throw are... rocks. Yeah, <laughs> all day. It's uh, crazy You know, last still. time I went down there, my, um, rest in peace, my homie Dirt Bike, they said, I seen the memorial and I knew it was him because it's right there where he was standing. They said he got shot seven times and died that day. And it's like, you just never know what's going to happen down there. It's over probably expect- nothing, over nothing. Probably yeah. Something. It, I, like, so yeah, that same time, actually, I had to go to a different block, you know, to to get my heart and um i got grabbed by my vest um because i had you know <laughs> sold some dude some bullshit iphone and told him the wrong like you know apple id whatever and um you know luckily like people know me so like a couple times i've been rescued okay. i start yelling and they That's like know it's me and and they'll come up and stop it but so, um commu- community you but man like bit. all you know, open air drug trades in different cities like are so different. I've driven from here to my from Miami to here, and you know, oh, I was down in Overtown in Miami for people watching who are out there like Overtown, man. Some some kids, uh, my dude was down there, and these like nine year old kids pull a strap on him, like, "What makes you think we won't kill you?" Right. And he's like, yeah. "I ain't got no money. They're like, give us your dope." Like wow. Overtown, you know what's even crazy? Wow. In Overtown is New Orleans. When we stopped in New Orleans trying to cop dope, we almost got killed. You don't go into trap houses where they don't know you down there. No, <laughs> no, you can't. no, it don't matter. It's not. We, like, we had to pay serve, someone serve and drive around on those fucked yeah. up roads. Like oh, a lot man. of places, like man, people out here, like in California, a lot of them. We spoiled sweet. out here. Man. I was telling him a story about in San Diego. Like there's like some kids that um, they hired me to like be in a video with them, and they're like, yeah, we want to go shoot in this area with these murals and shit. And I was like, all right. And then when we got there, the first thing I noticed was like, there's a nigga over there watching. There's somebody right there. There's like a point. I was like, who did you guys speak to to come over here? It's like some body on shit, like some cartel connected Mexican dudes and shit. I'm like, Mexican. I'm like, y'all can't even like, y'all just can't come up in people's neighborhoods and start shooting videos. Like you need a like you need a pass for that. You, you got to get a per like you got to get a permit for Hollywood. You got to get a permit to shoot in people's hoods. You can't just do that shit. That's how people get uh, robbed all the time. So I made them fools wrap that shit up. Rob, I'm like, like, that's, I'm like that's y'all lucky. not paying attention. Shit. I, we, well, I'm like, let's wrap it up. We're going to shoot at your studio. I'm not fucking shooting <laughs> no verse right here, man. We about to get got. All right. Anyway, um, so let's 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 wrap this up. Would you like the skid? You was on the blade. What woke you up and made you come up out of all this? What happened? Okay. So actually, it's time back to one of your questions um, about, you know, being raped. And I actually speaking of mental tabs, it was minimized. I'm gonna reopen it. Um, <laughs> got bars, um, got bars. Uh, so I, w- I you know, wondered to myself because you know we all thinkers here. That's why we have commonality, kindred spirits. You know, I, I, just, I just be wondering, and it's like, is it worth being attractive? Because it's a, it's a beauty and a curse. You know, so. Um, I, know. I deal with I, it every day. So I, you know, I had to go, you know, to the hospital to do the rape kit thing in the ER, oh. and, and I had uh, agoraphobia <sighs> because I, I just didn't want to go outside. I had nowhere to go. I didn't want to go back to the streets. And um, I had been fifty one fifty before when you know one time when I tried to take my Ooh. life. So I I knew that about seventy two hour hold. That's what a fifty one fifty is. And um, you know they ask you, are you a danger to yourself or others? And I you know I really didn't want to go. I they say they in the ask, in the they ask you. They ask you. What kind of shit is yeah, that? well, like, you know well, what? You in, in, in the programs, they say jails, institutions, and death. <clears throat> I done died hella times. I've been to jail hella times. But institutions, that I can't do. Like when they, oh man, this is no, deep breath. Up, <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I was like, fuck it. Yeah, um, you have to say yes if you want them to keep you. I had nowhere to go. 
So the next day I woke up and I was like, fuck, let me out of here. I was scheming on a crime I could commit just to go to jail because I was in the loony bin. And um, I wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping. And then they told me after the, um, you know, 72 hours, they're like, we're going to 5250 you. I'm like, what the fuck is a 5250? That's a, a step, a tier above the 5150. It's a 14-day hold. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, hell to the no. Um, so I was freaking out. Was right? it like in and the mental spot? Yeah, are you the only same one? Yo, there, I, I woke up and this old bitch in the middle of the night, like a scary fucking movie, was wearing my clothes, hovering Oof. over me. And... I was like, get me out of here. Smells, it smells that, you know that jail smell? Like, oh, it smells worse than that. I don't know got, that smell. You know that smell, Jesus? <laughs> no, I don't know that smell. <laughs> oh, I hate that. So, I have no wish to know um, that smell. So, so pretty much. I know I, I know the smell because I smelled it me, on, on, my, on my dudes who have come out of jail. I'm it's, always It's immediately steaming, like, go so. take a three-hour shower, my nigga. <laughs> right. Like, no, get take that a shower and a bath. Yeah, so. and a bath. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm always scheming. I'm like, uh, to me, there's always a way out. You know what I mean? You just got to think like that. You yeah, know, There's always a way the survival out, Survival of the fittest, man. Always. So, um, like we I, just played, my deep. Shouts out. Rest in peace, P. But go ahead. So uh, Ali Hardmo. That's what we say in Arabic. When say it rest again. Ali Hardmo. That means rest in peace. Like we, okay. if, if if you say someone who passed away and you don't say Ali Hardmo, that's rude. That's, you know, you just got to so say God, God bless the dead. Yes, exactly. Yes, so, um... So, yeah, I speak Arabic, read and write, uh, along with some other languages. But um, this is my tattoo on Maza. Anyway. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> okay, so so I, I filled out a form for a patient advocate to come see me. I said, yo, what are my options? She's like, I could take you to court to see a judge. He's the only one that could lift this um, 5250. But I'm just letting you know right now, he's not going to just let you out. you got to provide an alternative. So, you know, I'm good at speaking in front of judges. Fuck a public defender. i got to go to court on Thursday. Uh, anyway, so I said, yo, just Whoa. if I get a rehab to pick me up and they got a bed, will you let me out? He said, yes. So um, shout out to the Lighthouse in Anaheim. There's shout a lot of Lighthouse. Dude, there's a lot of whack ass treatment centers out there that just want to make money off you. Right. What what changed me is this one woman. Her name's Eula. She's shout out Eula. She's from the skid, too. And mm. um, when I got there, because I don't I don't let people in, you know, like the, the fact that we talking about all this deep shit right here publicly is because I went through the program and like, you mm-hmm. know, like she taught me your level of acceptance is directly correlated with your level of serenity. Right. And if you don't have serenity, you don't have shit, you know, on the contrary, um, your level of expectation. So the higher expectations are, your expectations are is inversely proportional with your serenity. Okay. So like, you know, That's level cool. up 3.0, your acceptance and, mm-hmm. um, you know, let go of your expectations. So back to this shit. Um, I got in there. I was like, I'm not telling anyone shit. You know, I'm just going to do my time. You know, right. if I could do, uh, <laughs> you know, I never mind. So um, she, she, you know, within an hour, I was crying and telling her my whole life. You know, wow. <laughs> tail between my legs. Trying to come in there is a hard ride. You know, yeah. So um, break you down. she She's taught like, me the women it. are powerful, man. And, like, and person, people like that in that position, they've seen it all before. She, she, yeah. She's seen like. Well, like she been, by, she like been, she been you. you. Yeah, she been, right. yeah, she was you. Mm-hmm. That's so, why um, you need those people, like people don't, I mean, sometimes people are strong enough to climb out of what you get into, but a lot of time you got to go seek those professionals who've been through it because they've seen it all. And the reason they do what they do, a lot of them is OG so, knowledge. They care. She actually told me, she's like, you need to get into this field because you could really fucking help some people. Huh. That's, very that's personable. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm the happiest when I'm helping anyone. You know, I've been on hella mission trips. I grew up a Christian, even though my dad's side's Muslim. I went to church yesterday. Right. Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, I... Um, they helped you out. They helped me out. They, they helped you. me out. I was saying women are powerful. I just want a quick shout out to my, my other half. She looked like my twin, but she's really 18 months older. Uh, her name's Lelo. She wraps up in the Bay. She hosts an open mic every Tuesday, 8.30 at this... Plug. Uh, Plug, Sen- plug. Senegalese spot in the mission. Plug. It's called Oh My Goddess. So oh my shout out to Lalo. Um, said, what's up? Yeah, you know, we're going to chill. I'm really, yeah, if you've seen are. us together, like, we a force, you know? Okay, well. So, um, inshallah, inshallah, that means God willing. But I, I mean, I don't want to talk y'all's ear off. It's all good. No, thank you questions? for sharing with us. Thank Thanks you. for coming through. We appreciate it. Hey, the room, can we Sorry. make some noise for Maz, man, for sharing her yeah. journey, her experience, hey. man? She made it out. I hey, did. Alhamdulillah. DJ, DJ, quadruple. Quadruple G, you ready to do this shit? Are you about to get back into music? It's Bloop, y'all. Play. Rest in peace, P. Hey, we back, we back, we back. Bloop. Uh, we had Maz on here, man. She told a, a, a cold ass tale, man, a, a showing you that you can come back from the depths, man. And um, if you know anything about Skid Row, man, that's the depths. 
Yo, today we're doing shit a little different. I just want to call some attention. <laughs> There's no, no comedy. Don't, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. There's no comedy. There's no fuckery. Because yeah. this is a segue, my G. There's no comedy in fuckery. Today, we're really trying to bring gems. We're trying to bring positivity. We're trying to just shine a light. We joke around. We talk a lot of shit. But on some real shit, in our real lives, we also believe in inspiring people and bringing people that are inspiring on. We on some woke shit. Like, yeah. For real. I mean, I mean, but we had to trick, we had to trick y'all. So if you're mad about this episode <laughs> not being full of fuckery, uh, maybe Blooper is not for you. I don't Who know. That? I don't Psych. Know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who that? Can we introduce you? Introduce yourself, bro. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is. <laughs> Should ask the OG. What's popping the people's <laughs> chat? What's up, y'all? Welcome yeah. to Bloop, sir. Um, Shabazz. Um, What's popping? Uh, where are you from? Who are you? What's up? Um, I'm from West Philly, yes, but I live sir. in Miami. Right. You know. I move around a little bit, but I live in Miami. Man, do you mind if Get I ask your snow, age? Do you bro. mind if I ask your age? How old I'm 49. You? Now, this brother is 49, and he looks like younger than most 23-year-olds who be <laughs> sipping lean all day. <laughs> what do you attest to that, man? How you how you keep it? How you keep it looking young and, and healthy and whatnot? As my followers will tell you and my supporters, everybody know, man, I drink water and mind my business. Ah! Ooh. Can I shake your head? Yeah. Oh, of course, no question. <laughs> Sound advice. That's the that's the key. That's the key to life, man. Well, I'm about to take a sip of the, sip Yeah, there you go. This drink some of that point, Essentia. This, you know, that's one of my favorite waters. Yeah, Essentia. I need this. Yeah, drink water, and mind your business. By the way, yeah, drink um, water, mind your business. I need man. to learn how to mind my business. Clear a skin bit. and a long life. Hey, clear <laughs> skin and a long life, man. That's my new logo. Yeah, clear <laughs> skin and a long life, man. Uh, okay, bro, bro. Um. What was it like growing up in Philly? Because um, I've been to Philly a few times, and uh, Philly's one of those spots in America where I'm like, woo. Where you from? I'm from L.A. Born and raised. Born and raised. Born in Inglewood, grew up in Mid-City, and currently live in South Central L.A. I got a house. Right, so, so, so it's one of them cities that I went so, to that I was like, oh, okay. And only two cities were like that. I've been, like, everywhere in the, in the States, and the only other place I got the feeling that I feel like in some of the hoods out here was I went to... um. Like some of the projects in Chicago, and I was like, oh, okay. Did you grow up poor? Huh? Oh, uh, not poor, but poor family, been all, you know, like that. But you wasn't, your family wasn't poor. Nah. Yeah, nah. see, nah, I was dirt, we was poor. Dirt poor, okay. Yeah, like poor, poor. Like, what part of Philly? Uh, Southwest Philly, West Philly. Okay. You know, so, I mean, I, but I came by way of Georgia. I was born in, born in Georgia. Okay. You know, I went to Philly when I was uh, 18 months. Mm -hmm. Then went back to uh, Georgia in the third grade. Was in Georgia again from the third to the seventh grade. Right. Then went back to Philly from seventh grade forward. So you mixed your, like a southern dude and a Philly yeah, I got southern pr principles. That's yeah, what but I even got. in the but even in yeah. Georgia, I was literally like I was born in the projects, right, like right. in them. In them. Well, in my mother's bedroom. My folks, their parents was. Poor in Alabama, like they live in, like what they call the country, like out yeah, the country. Yeah, like, I'm from the country. Yeah, my pops. Dirt roads so, and all that. Thir yeah, dirt <laughs> roads. Thirteen brothers and sisters, one house. Like they all sleep in. Yeah, the, yeah, they yeah. All that's my that's room. my father's. That's how that's my, my father. father he family. grew up like that, but then he like he got himself in. He like, went to high school, graduated, went to Alabama State, and then came out to LA. Met my mom's, and he came out to LA, got him a good job at the LAX, working for the airport. Perfect. And my mom's went to school and became an RN. Right. And, you know, so I wasn't poor because of that. You know, good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, yeah. did, they did what thank, they got to do. Thank God for that. <laughs> I do. I You're thank the talk, universe you know? for I mean, that shit. I mean, I don't, you know, a lot of people, you know, when you say you're from certain places, Philly, New York, you know, people don't know what it's like. You know, that's why I asked you if you was poor, because the story is the same everywhere. Exactly. You know, I, I, I can't over-exaggerate it or, you know, no. or or or, or under-explain it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really poor, like... like explain, it, explain to people, like, um, disrespectful roaches and shit like that. Like, growing, like yeah, I, yeah, I got yeah, cousins yeah. like that. that yeah, like, no, nah, like... That you got to you know, deal with in the morning. You got to deal with that. You know, you got to deal with... You know, you have to deal with, you know... Uh, Food stamps. You mm -hmm. got to deal with no heat, no hot water. Mm -hmm. You know, brushing your teeth with baking soda. You know, wipe your ass with newspaper when there was no toilet paper. Mm -hmm. You know, mom got to borrow food stamps because hers didn't last the whole month. How many siblings you, know? you have? My mother has six children. I'm oh. the oldest. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? You're and big um, bro. you know, yeah, I'm big brother. I just finished arguing with my sister. <laughs> 
<laughs> on the way here. I just I just got off the phone, man. Yeah, so, no. so it never ends. No matter how old you get. You no, know, but my my family tight though. And it wasn't yeah. even an argument. It's yeah. more or less mm-hmm. like on some big brother shit. You know what I'm saying? Schooling. You know what I mean? Oh, it's just nonstop. Nonstop. You know, but I mean, it's... it's how'd, you, uh, how'd you survive with that? Because, I mean, was you like, did you get in the streets? Like, of course. You handled it? Well, see, this is the thing. Like, the, you know, and my mother, I wasn't... That didn't drive me to the street. Right. Like, you know, you know, you got some guys who who started hustling because it was, you know... You know, everybody likes I had to feed my family. <laughs> no. Everybody knows I had to feed my family. I, You know, but some guys, that's really there. Some guys really adapted that mentality like right some of them really like i respect guys who really faced those circumstances right at a young age and did what they had to do. and sat no not even did oh, it oh, but what? sat back and actually thought about it and right. said you know what i'm tired of my mom doing having to do this i'm tired of my dad not being here i'm tired like yeah. i respect dudes who really put it in their mind i'm going to get to this check right. and went and did it by any means necessary see that wasn't my story right like my mother, my mother been a Jehovah's Witness since I was five. To, mm-hmm. From then till now, she's mm-hmm. still one. She's still. And from five to seventeen, you know that was something that was put into my life. It's not something that I welcomed into my life because Mm-mm. the religion went against every fiber in me. Like <laughs> you, you knew it from a young age. That nah. yeah, because, I mean, I didn't know it at a young age, but growing uh, up, I it, figured it out because uh, all the things that you couldn't do. Are things that were in me by nature. Right. You couldn't play organized sports. Oh, fuck. Oh. I'm a natural born athlete. I come yeah. from a family of athletes on my father's side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I come from a family of athletes. My father's a quarterback. My dad, my my uncle was a quarterback. My right. brother was a quarterback. You Whoa. know, like I was naturally gifted with sports, did but have, I couldn't play. Did you have an arm? No, I was good. I was pretty much like a good safety wide receiver. Like okay, I was okay. I was good with like my dad used to be really, really angry because my mother wouldn't let me play because I was natural, like yeah. naturally instinctive. Like that's a battle that people I'm have. I'm the guy with the like. Yeah, I would, I would, I probably would have been like a a, a Deion Sanders or oh, shit. or like a or, or like a uh, uh, Terrell Owens. Like I was a ball. Like yeah, I hands. could follow that ball, <laughs> and my hands was crazy. Like so, glue. You know, so my dad knew that. Like yeah, he really cool. wanted me. Like my brother was a QB, but I was better than my brother. Oh. I never had to practice and like, it just wasn't. Yeah, natural ability. I had natural nah, talent. I cats so like that. I, know I couldn't like cash that. in on that because my mother wouldn't let me play organized sports. You know, yeah. I couldn't cash in on, you know, females because I, I like girls since I was five, but you oh. can't have no girlfriend when you know your Jehovah's Witness. There ain't no none of that. How would she monitor that though? I mean, you know, they going to monitor. You're going to get yeah. monitored. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I got caught. You know? <laughs> they had to monitor me. Yeah. I, I was under heavy surveillance. <laughs> you know, don't. I didn't say I didn't commit the crime. Nor did I say I didn't get caught. I said I wasn't supposed to. You weren't supposed to. You understand? So I it just went against who I. I didn't get a chance to naturally flourish as right. an individual. Huh. You know, which later in life, hindsight being twenty twenty, you get to learn and understand the importance of even if you have religion. You teach it. You teach your children what you believe in, and you instill those morals and valuable values and principles. But you can't make them be what you chose for yourself. Right. That's right. So, ended up at 17, 18, That's how I ended up in the street because it came from rebellion. Oh, like you was like, I'm done. Like I'm cool. Like yeah, I'm, I'm tired cool. of this. Like yeah. I like girls. I want to get to some money. I, I'm I'm out. You know, and you know, in eighteen, my mom put me out. So what'd you go? What'd you do? What'd you go? Uh, when I got put out, yeah, right. When I got, got put out. out. I, I lived in the crack house for ten months. Whoa. You know, but I wasn't getting high though. In like I ain't never been a. You know, I. You're not a user. You know, I never been. I ain't never been a weed smoker. I always been about being fly, getting money, <laughs> smelling good. Like you know, I always want the check. Like I don't want to do nothing else. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But that's the environment I lived in for ten months with my man and his father. You know, that's what. You know, that's what they were on, but I wasn't on that. Right. So, you know, starting from 17, 18 forward, you know, so came the street life. And I ain't got to really, you know, glamorize you know, and no, glorify no, and get into too much of that. Told. You know how it's that goes. It's, it's all over there. We've but that's how it started. You I, know did saying? you know the uh, cats out there, like uh, Beans and all them? Those my state property is family. Oh. Beans, oh. Sparks, oh. Petey, Free. Oh. You know the beards are in the building. Yeah, the Whoa. beards. Are, yeah, I can, I can call. I can call fifty of them right now. 
He said, you know, his brothers. Yeah, the yeah. bears in he the said, building. Shout out to my boy Tone Trump, Jack Cross, biggest go. bears in the building. Okay, you know, Freeway. Okay, you know, what okay, I'm saying, say okay. he started the beard. He said he got the biggest. He got the best beard. He said <laughs> they their own security. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> they said we were own security. Yeah, yeah. Free said he got the best beard. He do. Uh, yeah, that's what he, you let him tell it. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's family. Right, right. The whole Rockefeller clique is family. Okay, like, you okay. know, Bleak, one of my closest friends. I just uh, did Casanova two time video last week for Old 50. Yo, yeah. listen. For CEO Memphis Bleak, shout out. Listen, shout out to Cash, man. Like, Where Cash. Go? Yeah, I yo, saw Cash. Cash is real. I saw, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Really real I can't. Oh, he's, I'm, a real <laughs> he's not a rapper. He's a, listen, he's a <laughs> real dude that decided listen, they made him rap. What? Wait, listen. What? Wait, what? I don't even know. True Casanova. True story. You know what? And I'm going to say, this because what he just said. <laughs> so last night I'm at Jamie Foxx yeah. house at uh -huh. the party. Right. And and I see Cass. I haven't seen Cass yeah. since <laughs> everything took off. Right. Like Cash is home team. Okay. So I ain't seen Cass since everything been moving for him. Yeah. I seen him last night. His name is Ray. And and he and and uh and I was talking to uh I didn't see him. He saw me. I was talking to Trey Songs and somebody hit me and he spent me around. I'm like, <laughs> don't do that. Don't hit me. Get your gun. <laughs> But he reached. Cash, never no, mind. No, I was joking. No, <laughs> like he had it. Cash uh, yeah. really like yeah. Cash a real dude, man. He been shot like he's like he yeah. the song that I did the video for is the old fitty. Right. And he's saying I'm the like the old fitty. That vibe when Fitty yeah. came yeah, out. Like, yeah, he's like, been shot. He's that street dude, jail. Yeah, many like times. He, I mean, if you that kind of dude, but you ain't gonna be out here with that. But thing. I'm gonna tell you something. He, he, he in a good space. I'm talking to him last night. He got some good people around him. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know who he's in Bleak and Jay. He's immediate okay. hands on, but like, yeah. you know, from an executive perspective, yeah, Bleak. You know, like, okay. you know, Bleak. Like I said, Bleak, right. one of my closest dudes. I've been. I hear Bleak good since things 03. about him all the time. Uh, Bleak is a solid, yeah. solid, solid, solid guy. Like, I love him. Like, right. that's my man. Warehouse Music Group. Shout yeah, out. I, yeah. Debo, what up, Warehouse Music Group? <laughs> no, I could be, I could do a whole show shouting out all my industry. Friends, I'll do it for you. you know, I know, all my guys, man. I, I just salute everybody, man. I, I'm glad to see everybody winning, I, man. Hey, so you was at Jamie House last night. How was that part? I, I, Listen, they, they must have forgot to call. That was one of those joints, right? <laughs> was Migos there? Dude, I saw, the, I, I saw the clip of the, of the they almost got in a fight with Joe Button yesterday yeah, yeah, at the yeah, BT yeah, yeah. Award. That was disrespectful, bro. I, I, I'll Joe, get to that in a second. Joe was too much extra. I'll get to that I, in man, a second. If, if a nigga would have dropped the mic and walked away while I talked, they, they should have stole on Joe Button. <laughs> let's Joe get to that in a second. Nigga should have stole on Joe Button. They not still on Joe Button. Anyway, go ahead. Here we go. No, but um, go ahead. That was one of those. That was one of those parties where no matter what you did. All BET weekend. Yeah. If you didn't do that, you didn't do, do nothing. nothing. <laughs> like I'm like Sebastian this, OG. This has joint spoken. was like he has spoken because everybody was there. Go ahead. Who, yeah, nah. Like I, we, yeah, I mean, you know, every, everybody like everybody was in the building. Like so it was just one of those joints, and I'm trying to figure out how did all of these people get in this man's house? <laughs> <laughs> His house that big? Damn. Listen, man. Like it looked like. The parking down the hill looks like a uh, uh, like somebody went to a stadium for an event. Like oh my the, God. The, 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 it was crazy, man. But it was a good time, though. It was it was good. Uh, it was good networking. Network, good socializing. I was about to say that. You know, you seen a lot of old, old friends. Wait, wait. So there's no there's no metal metal detectors in that shit. Uh, <laughs> no, there was not. I guess Jamie wants everybody to feel safe. I mean, if you're gonna install a metal detector in your mansion, something wrong with your clip. You know, I guess you know. Because uh, it sounds like there was some niggas in there. But see, here's the thing, it. though. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Yes, sir. It's kind of sort of disrespectful to take a pistol in somebody's crib, right? Yeah. However. 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 If you are respectful. Yeah. You know enough. The, you know, to understand that even if you got that, you don't do no, that at no. somebody's house. Then, well, some people you know. say a uh, 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 armed society is a safer society. Well, if you ain't going to use it while you got it. Well, no, no I didn't say not no, don't use, no, it. use it. You just had to make, D you make know, choices, had to just, choices. Yeah, you know, choices. got to, choices and decisions. You know, got to ask yourself, is it worth my life? Consequences and repercussions. Yeah, choices, hey, decisions, and results. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, but, um, yeah, but the party was nice. It was a good time. I didn't go out. Um, so nothing. Did you go to the actual awards? No, I didn't do anything because it was, was Ramadan. I was fasting. 
I was out here doing interviews. Yes, sir. You know, so I wasn't really playing no parties like that. And yeah. honestly, I wasn't really interested because like I'm not feeling all the of whole, my friends. I'm not feeling the EBT Awards weekend, man. Yo, you know somebody else called him that that last <laughs> night. My, um, my shout out to Brandy Hunter, my publicist back in New York. Brandy called. She said the same thing. It's like I said, wow. You know, but it's funny because it's true. And I'm, but I'm gonna tell you why though. I'm gonna tell you why. Mm-hmm. Because people have allowed the industry as a whole to succumb to the dumb shit. Oh my god! Like they took the game and they just allowed whomever <laughs> the powers that be to just completely destroy the culture, man. It's the plan, though. The rules are gone. No, it's not just the rules, man. Like I posted something on my IG about this yesterday. Like those companies, like Viacom that owns BET, all those companies are invested in the prison, the prison industrial complex. Yeah, see, but so they have but, an agenda. It's but an see, agenda. See, here's the thing. I stopped saying they long time ago. Not they. Viacom. No. I'm not even talking about Viacom because okay. Viacom is they. They. I'm concerned with the us. Us. Oh, yeah. Cause Just like what you spoke about a second ago. Yeah. With the whole Migos thing. Oh, yeah. Dog, like, that, that was the wackest. I couldn't have... I'm going to tell you why I don't... Re- sent it, someone sent it to me to post. I didn't want to post I'm going to tell you why I don't respect it. Okay, let me hear. What happened was disrespectful. Right. But I'm going to tell you why I don't like it as a real stand-up dude. How many people saw the Vic Minson interview? I didn't check. What happened? You didn't see the Vic Minson uh, interview nah. with academics and Joe Button on there? Nah, you know? I didn't see it. Well, you is know, that the one where Joe stood up and got all crazy? Nah, that was no. the other dude. I haven't seen Vic Minson. Vic Minson. I only seen the little Yachty one. Yeah, yeah. And I came out liking y- little Yachty after it. Okay, I did too. <laughs> Here's my problem. <laughs> Thank you. Here's my problem. What? I don't like picks. See... The way I live and the way I move, I don't disrespect nobody. Right. Because I believe anybody at any given time can get it. <laughs> so I disrespect. I respect. No one's undefeated in the streets. I respect Nigga, everybody. Know that. Know that. You know what I'm saying? Because I have a problem if I can talk crazy to him, mm-hmm. but then I'm diplomatic when I talk Who to you. you? Uh... I'm not with people that. People pick. That's what you meant, picks. They yeah, pick so and choose. I don't have no picks. People pick, pick and choose who, who you are and how you are. You're one way. You're you uh, who you want to get wild with. That's it. People pick. That's the picks. I'm not going to get wild with nobody. Yeah. yeah. Now, when, if it's time to get wild, and if I know it takes a little extra while to deal with you, <laughs> I'm going to deal with that from how an extra you wild perspective. You know what I'm saying? But how mm-hmm. secret wild am I? And and where what are my weird ties? <laughs> yeah, who have I done music videos for? And come to you and just beat you all down to the ground and stomp you out, yeah. and you not really didn't yeah. even call for all that. Yeah. The reason why I don't respect what happened with the whole Migos thing. All right, what happened? What well, is so, because wait, wait, let, the some Vic of our Minson, listener, some of our listeners don't know what we're talking about. So explain. We're talking about Joe Button, an academic, interviewing the Migos. And I think the one that had been in jail mm-hmm. is the one they were trying to clown. Uh, you, uh, well, how is it that you're not on the song? Well, I am like, on the song. Huh? What you say? You, like, <laughs> academics was clowning, trying to clown the man. Joe Buttons was like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry like, up, get him hurry out up, here, up. Wrap it up. Get out of here. And then he just got up, dropped the mic, and walked away. Mm-hmm. And then they stood up. Was, they and was then like, they huh? stood up. Like yeah. now, now it's a whole bunch yeah. of... But the reason why I completely don't respect any of that is because when Vic Minson was on there talking about Chicago, uh-huh. you understand what I'm saying? He sat in that seat and told academic to his face, you a bitch. Whoa! And I should slap the shit out of you. Whoa! Oh, shit. Nobody said nothing. Shouts out oh, to shit. Vic Minson. Why, they're scared of Chicago like that? It's, I, it's not about that. It's not that. It's, it's not a man. You were sitting there with a man. Man in your face. You were sitting there with a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you, was, and when, and when you, when you asked him a question... And you really kind of wanted to like slick get into some satire. Yeah. He came right for your neck. And when you asked him, he said, when you asked him, when academics asked him, well, how did you feel about that? He said, honestly, I really wanted to smack the shit out of you. But now you want to be diplomatic and talk it out. And then further in the conversation, he told him, I think you a bitch. I, but you don't say nothing. Let me take one All second. All Joe Button say take, is. Let me take one second. Shouts out to Vic Benson. <laughs> Listen, man, I never met the man. I don't know. I never. I don't know what he stand for until that day. See, that's what type of shit I'm into. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into being the a now. man. The man and living in if the now. If you gonna do that to the Migos, yeah. When Vic Benson told you 
You wow. would not talk like this if we wasn't in front of this camera. Uh huh. You wouldn't talk to my dad, homies. No, homies. Yeah. If we wasn't in this controlled environment. Yeah. Don't get on TV and try to clown the Migos. I mean, like, it's so weird though that people act like because since academic has been put in front of like cameras and stuff, he's always been a clown. But listen, bro. Like, see, I don't even did. get into you that. Like know. with my yeah. platform, yeah. I made one mistake that I'll never make again. What'd you do when I addressed? The meek and gang beef. Oh, you openly? Jumped. Did you speak on it openly? I spoke on it because you know people. Involved. Meek is my little brother. Oh, so see, uh, but what I learned from that, like my mother taught me, right. as long as you live, you'll always learn. Yeah. And what I learned from that, drink water and mind your business. <laughs> and because guess what, Lion meek no is my man, up. but yeah. that shit could have went all the way bad. Whoa. Because Wack came back and said something, made a video addressed yeah. to me, mm -hmm. and oh, he spoke to you. He didn't speak to me directly, but he put up a video addressing me, which it caused a frenzy, which the fire got put out the very next day. Uh, because because you know, those type of people, yeah. This we know the same people. Yeah, it was a exactly. phone call and it was yeah. done. Yeah. But what I took from that is, even though Meek is my brother, I know how to address things without using people's names and without addressing them directly. So if I want to address situations... If I want to address situations and use innuendo, and then you decide to reach for me because you think I'm you talking you about you. You inserted yourself into You inserted it. yourself. Yeah. So this whole, like, I wouldn't be talking about this Joe Button Migos thing if you didn't bring it up. True. I would have addressed it yeah. differently from my platform from a perspective of, of... I don't even know why I thought of it right now. Don't, it don't even matter. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. But the thing about it is this. I just put up a video the other day about how the culture is just like... All week long, for the last week, I can't stop talking about Philando Castile. I was going to get to that with you. I can't stop I was, talking I was about gonna it. I was going to get to that so with I you. So I put up a video that no, said... No, you. You're like, I'm not going to stop talking about and it. And you got a problem not, with me putting videos with this? Our outlets are not talking about it enough. Like, People we want to know time what talking about Beyonce, Migos. We want to know what yeah. Beyonce going to yeah, name right, the twins. No, no, right, we want to know yeah. the no, Migos and Chris Brown. And we like... That's the main thing. It's I've not enough to to you, outrage bro. being shown. It's, it's not, not enough. It's not enough oh, press being cop, given to it. That cop got busted lying. He lied. Listen, dog. He lied. He lied. He, he lied. lied. He period. lied. He lied. Period. He fa he's a murderer. So it's not enough people. And no, no. With no my thing saying is like, something. My thing is like this: like police, like by police not speaking up and being outraged about. Outraged about this shit, it's like to me, there's no good cops. Or the, see, or the NRA don't no give such, a shit about their. Well, we, no I, that, that was a conversation I just had. There's no good cops. The other day there's with no a friend cops. of mine. If you're, yeah. There are good cops, but what they're doing is they're causing this narrative that you just mentioned. Yeah. If you're a good cop, you have to say, you I'm not to. with that. No, because if you're a silent good cop, you ain't a good cop. Now, <laughs> respect to the ones, because we have a tendency as humans to couple everybody in the same box. I can honestly say I've had police officers on my Instagram right. commenting, Ooh. please don't judge all of us. He was wrong. Oh, it, but it's their okay. fault. It's, but you got to say, bro, do something about your people. No, 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 no. <laughs> it ain't. That's enough for me. Because that's enough? That there's, I'm one, that there's one? Is no, 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 no. It's not that it's one. Let me explain something to you. How's that enough? I'm going to tell you why. All right. I'm a realist. Right. Period. The world is made up of how we want things to be. I have a saying, don't confuse what you want with what is. Mm. The bottom line is, there are some cops who don't like what's going on. Right. Yeah. The reality is, we're not going to know all of them. Right. We're not going to hear all of them. What happens, wait, but we'll break it down. What happens if a cop, I, I know what happens, tell the people, what happens if a cop speaks up and out against something like Philandro? He could have, he or she could face repercussion from the blue wall, as they what the they call wall, it. The blue wall. They could, they could face repercussion for that. But at the end of the day, the ones who start to do that, now you're making a choice. You're making a choice of a career. It's a slope. You could put this behind you and go on to something else. Because what's going to happen is this: the innocent ones who don't stand for it. Yeah. And this is not wishful thinking. This is just the reality. Because I don't care how what type of pipe it is, pressure going to bust them. <laughs> pressure busts so pipes, y'all. Bust at pipes. some point, at some point, the pipes going to burst. Oh yeah. And it's not going to be the bad cops. It's going to be the good cops, the ones that should have said something. 
That's gonna be the one that's gonna be sitting in the car eating the donut, mm-hmm. and the and the oh. inevitable unfortunate got, happens. Yeah, a dude's gonna dump. But you. that's gonna be the one who wasn't with the bullshit. Mm-hmm. But because mm-hmm. you're the one who stayed silent, you're the one that caught the bad break. Mm-hmm. Hey, so, so drink water and mind your business unless you're a fucking good cop and then say something. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> you, you know, drink water, mind your business has its limitations just like everything else. It do, right? You got to know when my to, business you know, see, you gotta like, know when to mind your business. Because when you're a cop, the people hey, are hey, your business. Hey, hey, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, we're going to come back. We're going to come. We're gonna take a music break real quick, and then we're going to come back with Shabazz the OG. Let's get it. Hey, Blue, DJ Neg, you ready to run that? Let's go. Bloop. We back up in here, man. Bloop. Look at this man drinking this life water, man. I like that water. I like that the design, but it's uh, made by PepsiCo. Is it? Yeah, it is. It ain't. It's pH balance. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pH balance, but if you read the fine print, it's PepsiCo. Man, you can't get away from none of these corporations. Man, they be buying up. They be putting out stuff, tricking you. They write like mm-hmm. organic on shit. Like you gotta, if you really about that life, about like all the way, you just gotta check, man, because they they slip. No, you gotta do what I'm doing at the crib. Grow all your own vegetables, Boom. all your own fruits. <laughs> You gotta Ooh. spend that time, put that in. Woo! <laughs> My bro, 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 OG Shabazz. Um, how did you um, what's your money team connection? How did you um come up? How'd you get in with? Uh, the money team. Yes, sir. Champ. Being myself. Champ. Being myself, man. Um, same Winners. thing y'all see on my platform, doing the videos. Wait, what, I, what is your platform? Can we shout, let's shout it out so people can check out more of your thing. Uh, Shabazz the OG on Instagram. There it is. Uh, Shabazz the OG on Instagram. Uh, Shabazz the OG TV on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, my tour page is uh, "Is It Worth My Life" on uh, on Instagram, I Twitter, like that. and Facebook. I like that one. That quote from you. Yeah, "Is It Worth What's My Life" is uh, is the uh, is the name of my tour. <laughs> um, but the way I met Champ was um, he was watching the page. Oh. What? Tam had, had his eye on you. He had his eye. I mean, he was wild, and, and I didn't, didn't know it. Know. And, and I got a, I got a, I got a phone. I got a call. How long ago is this? Uh, February. And did what? you? Hey, did you think it was a crank call? You think someone messed nah, with well, you? No, I know his. Um, I know his assistant, Kichi. Okay. Kichi and I are really good friends for the last nine years, and she actually, she actually texted me. She didn't call me. She texted me, uh, and invited me to his big birthday party he just had back in February out here. Whoa. And how um, was that? It was ill. You know, the invitation was ill in itself, you know, for her to tell me, you know, Champ wants me to invite you to his party. He genuinely likes your videos. Whoa. And, um, you know, he wants to give you some money team gear and he, you know, he want to meet you. So I, I flew out, me and my manager, Katie, mm-hmm. we flew out here. I went to the party, went to the dinner party, hung out for the weekend, went to his crib downtown. And um, it was just a genuine, natural bond. Connection. just. You know what pop. I mean? It was just like real nigga time. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, it was just <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? So, so he, um, you know, he told me, like, personally, like, look, I support what you're doing. I like what you're doing. You know, the culture needed. You know, I'd rather see you on the street talking like this than talking like this from behind the wall. Hmm. Like, a lot of dudes got this knowledge, but they in jail. Yeah. There's a lot of dudes that's not out, that's out here but not talking like this. And he's like, we need that. He said, and you don't got nothing to worry about. I got you. Whoa. I'm behind you. and. It's been like that ever since, you know, but the whole, it's funny because he embraced me, you know, from a support perspective. So me, I'm always the type to, you know, to reciprocate goodness. So obviously I can't pay him, you know, buy him nothing. So, no. you know, I, he called me from Europe on FaceTime and just to check on me. Right. And I was like, yo, champ, you know, I'm putting together my, and I was already in the middle of putting together my Is It Worth My Life tour. Right. And and I said, listen, I got an idea, man. You know, I want to um, I want to attach your brand to mine. You know, I want to, I want to put, I want, I want my tour to say it's presented by you and the money team. Like that was my idea. Right. You know, a lot of people think, you know, I kind of jump ship and, and let Floyd take my brand over. You know that I was already in the midst of building, but they didn't really understand the science nah. behind it. Like I did that, you know, as a thank you to him. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, um, attach your brand to what I'm doing. Like they got the box and they got the entertainment, they got the record label, but like what I'm doing is more like community service and philanthropy. And his brand wasn't it was highlighted mis- missing for that. that component. So you know? the tour is a speaking tour with you, yeah, on stage. 
Speaking yeah, I go to, to schools. I go to uh, detention centers. I did go to you, um, universities. No, before That's you dope. did it, did you study any other motivational speakers, or or you pay attention to them cats out there like mm, ET and them? No, sir. No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. I'm gonna tell you why. Because what I'm doing is not calculated. Huh. Like, this is really me. Okay. Not saying that they're not. What I'm saying is this is not. I don't read statistics. I don't know. The 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 um I don't know the stats on homeless black people. I don't know the stats on uneducated black youth. I don't know the stats on you know, I, I don't know none of that. Right. But what I do know is life because I done lived it and I don't talk about nothing I haven't done. done. And it's not too much that's going on that I haven't witnessed or done myself. So I'm always able to speak from a perspective of not hypothetics. Right. I'm talking it because it's real. And that's why it's so relatable. That's why my platform has grown the way it has. That's you know, that's why people can message me and say, hey, I don't send my son or my kid to the Boys and Girls Club. I make them watch your videos. Ooh, you know, man. I have females, young men, young women, relationships, you know, life problems. It's like, listen, please don't stop doing what you're doing because that video you put up today, you were speaking directly <laughs> to me. I get one of those every day. Right. You know, so. What'd you uh, get on the ground? In terms, you said when? Yeah. I've got on Instagram, uh, well, I got on the gram pretty much like in, what, 2013 maybe? Right. But doing this, the video started in 2014. What, how'd it come to you? Sitting in the hotel room in Japan, bored. But every day, <laughs> every day you wake up and you have a feeling of what you just want to speak to the Oh, every day I'm going to say something. Right. You know, because I'm committed to it now. See, what happened is initially it was just something that I was doing. You know, speaking about social life, you know, cause I'm from, a, I have a music industry background. So, you know, a lot of the guys in the industry are my guys. So, right. you know, we do a lot of club stuff. Right. So being in the clubs, you see a lot. So initially most of my dialogue was about the things we see socially, you know, guys fronting like they got bread and they don't. So Chicks good. carrying bags that they borrowed and acting like it's uh, dead. Like all that type of stuff. So, yeah. but what started to happen is the way I was giving it up, um, I put up one video one day and Meek reposted it. Oh. And then it went and then I went right from there. Right and then from there, you know, Meek reposted again. Which and one? Then, Which video was it? Uh I was talking about male groupies in the club that push chicks out the way to stand next to guys in the oh, VIP section. Oh man. <laughs> I was just talking about them on my IG. Yeah, they still the doing that. Yeah, yeah, they still doing that. I'm done so. with them. I only want women to follow me now. You know, and that's yeah. what the and that's what the and that's what the whole narrative was behind the video. So right. it just went from that to people really starting to gravitate and relate to everything that I was saying. So it turned into people actually sending me DMs, people actually telling me they life problems, me actually talking to people on the phone. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Somebody getting cursed out y'all about. Last time it was a s skill saw. Oh, we gotta fix it. Plug that back in for him. <laughs> Get the water, man. Save the ship. Save the ship and sink it. Sorry about that. We still on the air? Yeah, we are. We, oh, we ain't live. We're going to chop it up and come back. Nah, we can keep this shit. We can show them the fuckery. Yeah, of we should. The fuckery doesn't radio. end over here, though. So, never. So, it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh. She unplugged it. It went to the, it went to the, it went to the, um. <laughs> it went to the point of, um. It went to the point of. It got serious. Mm. Like I really started to see that people were in need of, of jewels. Yeah, like it was really like, and then my guys, like it just, it, it was organic. It was natural. It was real. It wasn't nothing that was forced. And I don't get up every day and be like, damn, I don't feel like doing this, but let me think of something to say. <laughs> like, you know, it's just um, natural. natural. Which, and like I said, now I'm committed to it because it has turned into something. And, and was it, it all left positive Instagram. perception or did anyone... Do fools talk, try to talk greasy to you on there? I mean, it's Instagram. They're going to talk greasy, and I'm human. I pop back at times, but I got, <laughs> got to back. the point where I got to the point where I had to learn, like, because sometimes the, the, the dialogue can Tell be me, so Tell me, I need, I, I need some help from you because, like, just, I had, like, block 15 niggas yesterday. Okay. Like, fools be trying to come for me on Instagram. Like, I, I'm like, man, like, and it's like so-called people who, like, they're like your fans. They're fans of you. Right. And they just, I think they want No, they're like, fans of what they thought you were. And they just want attention from you. That's right. why they want personal attention from you. How do you deal with, like, 
with people who are talking shit to you on Instagram. I need, well, I like need, I said, I need advice on that. Um, you had to remind yourself that you're the idiot for arguing with somebody that you absolutely <laughs> do not know. <laughs> That's what I had to do. You're, stopped, giving, you're giving them money and time. I stopped <laughs> making them the fool and made myself the fool. Ooh, oh, I'm the fucking idiot. He just said some truth. I'm arguing with somebody that I do not know. Could be a robot. <laughs> it could be a seven-year-old. Yeah, it could be a seven-year-old. <laughs> seven-year-old robot. It could be a seven-year-old. Yes, sir. Tell me more about it. You know, so, I, I, you know, it's just I'm so a... now when I see it, you just block them, man. I had a guy, no bullshit. About a week and a half ago. They make new pages, though. They make He made 10. No oh, shit. Oh, my God. He started at 1. Uh, when I blocked, he went, he stopped at 10. <laughs> and the reason why he stopped is because he realized I wasn't saying anything else. No, you just go. And, and it's so funny because. <laughs> what, that was some racist shit? What was no, 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 no. It was so weird because I get more guys, right? Yeah. I get more guys that want to know why you always got the toothpick. I got more guys that get out of my I got, mouth, nigga. Like, I got more guys that say I, I do the same. I got flaws. Why don't like, you take? Why don't you take you the hat off? Like, no, why, no, I don't do that. But uh, why you? Why don't you take your hat off? So then, uh, I told him, won't you just go through my videos long enough? You'll find a hat, picture with my hat off. Yeah. So I got a I got a video that I did. No hat on. I got yeah. dry soap on my face. Right. And I still did the video for that purpose and that purpose only because I get so many guys that think I'm afraid to take my hat off because I got a big head. Nigga, I look good. <laughs> like, I keep some LL, on some LL shit. Like, I look good. Like, there's like nothing you can say. There's nothing yeah, you can say. Head, like, nigga, what? I'm what? like, what? I'm like, I'm accept what? that I'm handsome. What? What? Like, what? we're not going. We're, so that's I, the one fault they could try to find with you is some physical shit and they're a man? That shit is crazy. Oh, yeah, now nah, they can't say nothing about this dialogue. That's crazy. And I don't get no, I don't get no problems from women. None. You know, I mean, and if and and if and so if cool, I'm cool if it's Not okay if I'm it's I okay if I'm ugly to somebody. Yeah, so what? It's it ain't okay. About, it ain't even about I'm okay that. Okay with that. You ain't on there to show your fucking face is pretty. You know, I'm a, I mean, I'm a little, little bit. Little I am bit, a little, little bit, a <laughs> little bit. You know, you gotta have some marketability <laughs> around here. You understand that, what I'm saying? Hey, that's, that's but that's why I'm on the green. The the thing oh, about God. it is, man, like the platform has purpose. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. It has purpose. Right. I use it responsibly. Mm -hmm. I don't disrespect people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't allow my, myself to be disrespected. But like, mm -hmm. it's a real, it's a it's a real thing going on out here with us, man. It's a real thing going on. Speaking of which, Philandro. Now what's up? I I watched a couple of your videos on that. Why 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 one of the last ones that I saw from you? You're like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep talking about this. The, the, were there like people complaining that you keep talking about it or something? It's or? not. It's it's. I know how some people can be. Right. This wasn't so much that somebody said it. I just addressed it before they before it could be said. Right. Or just the fact that it needed to be said. Because you gotta think about this, bro. Like just like we were talking about the police a little while ago. Yeah. We all intelligent people. All cops aren't bad. I know some police officers. I, I had a stepbrother that's cop. You know, there's I know some cops. Yeah. You know, I know some cops who hate what's going on. Right. You know, and then there's those who hate it that I don't know. Right. Like, all cops are not bad. The no. thing about it is this. The reality, like I said, don't confuse what you want with what is. People want all of them to be bad as a narrative to makes put easy. them all... Because it makes it easy to vilify them. It makes it it makes it easy to hate them all. Yeah, it's like fuck the police. All you know, of them, all of them. It's, it's, it's easy to hate them all, but the reality of the situation is, they all aren't bad. But the other reality is, like we said earlier, the ones that aren't bad are the ones that really need to start to speak up. Because if you don't, then you, like the police and the judicial system, tell us you guilty by association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So hey, if you wait, don't, hold on, hold on one second. For our listeners right now, because I mean, some of them live in a underground hip hop bubble. Explain the situation we're talking about. Break we're talking down. about the break it down. The Philando Castile shooting. Break it down. Particularly, what and, happened? What, ha what What's the facts of what happened? The facts of what happened is Philando Castile was in Minnesota driving in the car with his wife and his daughter, and the police alleged that they pulled him over for a broken tail light. Right. Oh, I heard that one before. Pulled did him over for a broken. Did he have a broken tail light? He did. He did. However, okay. you know, but when you come to a car for a broken tail light as a police officer, 
If that's the purpose of pulling over the car, then there's a certain approach you go to with go to the car with. Yeah, like hey, buddy, you know, tell I, you know, you know, you but his gun is already unsnapped. Uh, you know, it went have, from a broken tail light to he fit the description of a robber. Uh, and then when the man tell him, I have a gun registered, he say, give me your license and registration. Right. He said, okay, I got to get it. Then he say, don't reach for it. And he re and then you shoot him five times. You shoot seven times, but you shoot him five. And then your story is, well, I smelled marijuana in the car. So if he was, if he was, if, if he don't care, kid, if he don't care yeah. enough about his I daughter. I heard that quote. That he would smoke marijuana in front of his daughter, then I know he don't care anything about me. That he would kill me, and that man got off, and he I, got acquitted. I, I, he got acquitted after saying some fucking bullshit like that. And now, and now this man, not that it really matters, but his ethnicity was what the shooter. He was he's a uh, Hispanic. His last name is Janet. Which, which fucks up the narrative a little a little yeah. bit. No, the well, narrative is fucking. Is a, it's a not, cop is a cop. Not, yeah, a cop is a cop. Yeah, that's this what is the like. thing. I don't, it, man. I'm not listen. even thinking about race. I'm talking yeah, about it has police. nothing to do with yeah, race about, because we got about, some black police yeah, tripping. That are, yeah, exactly. So it's not about but race. People, at all. No, people do think it's about race. They though. do, but of course. that's what I'm saying. Because most of the most of the circumstances is a white cop shooting a black person. But the thing is this, man. Yeah, go ahead. What people got to stop doing as a whole, and this is why my supporters rock with me so heavy, man. I don't do innuendo. I don't do what it might be. If I can't show it, I can't really rock with it. I can't no. talk. Like, I can't, I can't, no one can make me say all cops are bad, all white cops are bad, yeah. all police is pigs. Like, that's just not, it's a lot easier to put that negativity in your head mm -hmm. than to say, well, I'm going to deal with him. Like, I'm from a time where that cop, we're not dealing with the po with the police force. How you find out where he at? What's his address? What's his address? Where does his kids go to school? Where does his mother live? Where does his wife work? We're not going to take it with the... We, I'm, I'm from that era. I'm from where if you did it, we coming to see you. And yours. Woo! And yours. That's real. You going to feel what you made his mother feel. Yeah, yeah. I can't take it out on Officer Sanchez, yeah. who might be a model citizen. Mm -hmm. No, technology allows us to find <laughs> this prick. Hey, man. He can be found. I don't even understand, like, uh, to me, like, I, I don't, I always say this about Florida, man. Um. The fact that that of George Zimmerman is still walking around in Florida, but well, he don't got touched a couple times. I, no, I don't. He I, ain't got touched. How put, he should have been. I put touched. it like this: George Zimmerman would not be able to live in California. I'm gonna just say that right. There. Listen, I'm gonna say is, that right. There, listen, listen, right there. listen, 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 right brother. Right there. Check this out. That's the twist, though. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I come from like Philly, right? Yeah. Philly is a mob city. I know. Philly is a mob city. I'm not. If I got a problem with you, I'm not going to come in the studio, close my eyes, and shoot the whole studio up. <laughs> We're not going to do that. No. I'm going to see you. And if and when I see you, if there's somebody with you that can identify me, then <laughs> they'll be seen as well. <laughs> if I can't find you, I'm going to find, find your somebody brother. Close to you. Find, mm -hmm. That's how that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People done got away from that. Well, because the mob had rules and all the rules are gone. Yeah. The, no, the rules ain't gone. They're just not being applied. Yeah. Well, being no one taught them to these kids either. And these well, kids will you know, shoot you over nothing. What, what, they don't, what's, you know, the, what's the disconnect, you think, between now then and now? What is it? The culture. The culture. The culture got what damaged. Happened? What happened? The culture got, because it By fell what? into the, it, it got sold. Mm -hmm. To who? To the ones who don't give a damn about it. To who? You no, know, you can't put a you can't put a name or a face on it because right. I don't know everybody that's sitting in those offices. Right. I don't know everybody that's pushing those buttons. Right. You know, some people know who they are, but <laughs> I, me personally, yeah. But I know that the disconnect is this: everybody want 
or everybody got a check. Check. Everybody got a bag. Check. Everybody going after the money. Get the money, get the money, get the money. Yeah. I seen a girl on Instagram lick the top of a dumpster for $300 the other day. I saw her. Uh, I saw her. She took her tongue I saw her. and licked the top of a dumpster I didn't in an alley. I refused to post For $300. It. Someone tried to give me a post. post but, if she, but if she's an addict, she might have She's done not it. no addict. No, she's no, no, it's about dollars. this. It's, yeah. it, even if she Guys. is. I'm just saying she done worse shit for 300 possibly. No, but listen to what I'm saying, man. Listen to what I'm saying. Ooh. This is the narrative that's being spit to the kids. Yeah. Do anything yeah. for money. No, anything. no shame in it. If it's for money, there's no shame. Do anything for money. Like, I, I had to get that bag. Yep. Got Don't bag. judge me. I, got, I the got, the got the bag. I got the bag. No judgment. You know, so that's where the problem is. There's no morals. Mm. But here's the problem as well. Or not the problem. Here's what I found on my tour. What this reason why I like my "Is It Worth My Life" tour so much? When you know, what was your next date on it? Um, I gotta look at this. I, actually, LA ended until they do my summer run. So I've been St. Louis, Delaware, Philly, New York, um, Baltimore. When we come, uh, when we come Oklahoma. after the next music break, I want you to uh, spit out some dates of like where people can catch you. Because yeah, this, well, this is the, the new schedule is being. Comprised, comprised as we speak. Okay. Everything I've done from March to BET weekend is mm -hmm. done. So now the summer schedule is coming. I have a few dates coming up. Um, I think something in July, something in August, something in September, but it's being done now for the yeah. summer. Okay. And, you, and you're speaking to the youth pretty much every time? I, I, it's, it's, a adults mix, too. it's a mix. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, it's a mix. Like I've been to Morehouse University. I've been right. to Kennesaw State. Oh, I've been to a couple of high schools in Atlanta, uh, middle schools. I've been to a detention center in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I've been to uh, Delaware State University. Mm -hmm. I've been to a uh, transitional uh, drug facility You've in Philly. You've been to Bloop. Mm. What is it? You've been to Bloop. And I've been to Bloop in L.A. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. DJ Nick, we about to do this shit. We're going to play a couple more songs, and we're going to come back with OG uh, Shabazz OG, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, Cadillac Ron, man. And before that, that was Mountain Clouders, 2 Max. What's up, 2 Max? I'm going to get you in here with your old peg leg ass. Uh, what's up? Um, we're back. We back. We back in. Um, uh, you want to tell us what's up with your uh, what's, what's your man's in there from? Um, where's he from? Little Rock. What's mm -hmm. his name? What's his what's, what's his brother's name? What's up with him? Ar Music. Ar Music. Ar Music. A R M U Z I C. Follow him. How'd you meet him? Met him in Miami, sitting on South Beach. Well, he was just chilling <laughs> or what? We both was chilling. He was sitting at one table. I was at another. I was somebody. Somebody. Uh, I was talking music industry business with somebody. He heard it. it was no, he hustling. didn't hear it. Ear somebody hustle. that was with him. Ear hustle. Yeah. He was with somebody that knows me. Oh, okay. And they knew of a project that I worked in Miami. Right. And they knew Ar was, you know, in the midst of doing his thing. Mm hmm And he introduced Ar and I that day. Right. And that was August two thousand thirteen. Uh, we never touched down on it. Uh, how'd you get into? What's your music connections? What's up? What, you, what did you? What, what have you touched? What did you had your hands on? Started interning at seventeen from high school at a radio station in Philly, Power ninety nine FM. Who gave you that? Your first opportunity, Lady B. Lady B. Oh yeah, I've heard you tell the story before. Yeah, Lady B gave me my uh, first opportunity. First of all, shouts out to uh, that nigga D. Darren for like he put you. He like told me what's up with you. Yeah, no, nah, for you sure. Too. Good looking. D Nelly. Good one, D Nelly. Yeah, but um, yeah, it started. Uh, she gave you a first opportunity, then what you do with that? Ring. People you know, don't understand. Organic. You can come in the door as an intern, that don't mean nothing. Yeah, nah, but if it but see this is the thing. I mean man. Puffy was a, when I never heard of Puffy, he was an intern for um Yeah, uh, Uptown. Yeah, Uptown, yeah. Listen, man, it's like this. You can be all your aspirations can be whatever you want them to be. If it's meant for you to have it, it's yours. It's not it's inescapable. Hmm. That's why what I'm doing is going so well and so organic now because it's 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 it's, it's my purpose is what I'm here to do. To, it's like the same thing with the music industry. That's what I was supposed to do. It was part of my life journey. So was so it wasn't step. forced. What you do? What you do? You intern to what? Okay. From, I, from intern, I became an MC. From MCing, I was in the street. And oh, from, you used to have bars. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what happened with that? Yeah, ain't nothing happened with it. I just don't do it no more. <laughs> why? I mean, because it's not what I want to do no more. I could do it, you know? 
I mean, I could do Bust it. If, right I, mean, now I could do What's it. If, they wanna, <laughs> you know, sometimes there. they want to shake I'm me just down. Kidding. She's like, "What about me?" I'm like, "Just you know, kidding." I want know, you know, they, 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 you know, I could do that, but that's not what I, you know, I transition to behind the scenes. Right. I transition to artist development, road management. I, I transition to helping artists, and the reason why it was so easy for me to help so many artists because, again, naturally, this is what I do. Like I'm a natural star, man. Like that's just it. Mm -hmm. I'm a natural, I'm a born celebrity. I'm a born, I'm born showman. Hmm. I'm that's that's just me. And it's natural, it's not forced. I walk into a room, I don't have to open my mouth Who's and right? I Who's command that? a presence. You need you need to know who this guy is right here. Right. You know, and I show artists if it's in them, I bring that out of them. That's what I did with AR. Like right. two years ago, you couldn't even get AR to talk to people. What do you mean? He's like just like he Instagram? would not talk. What do you mean? What speak? Period. Give me his story. What's his story? I mean, he he wouldn't like he he's a, he's an introvert. Like he talented, get to his money, fly a little dude. But from an industry perspective, he's not that hungry. Hmm. Oh, I got to get out the hood. I need to make these bars. I got right. nah, because a lot of stuff what most dudes is rapping about and that they trying to get. He done had since sixteen. Yeah. He been doing oh, it. He been doing it. You know, but man. so he wasn't really a people person. He's not an industry guy at all to this day. He's just starting in the last year and a half to really start networking right. and talking to people. What's good with Miami these days, man? Miami's one of those places, man. It, it rubbed me the. I you know what. I went the first time I, we went out to Miami. I, I'm gonna be honest, like I was broke, so I didn't have fun. <laughs> That's why they like Miami. Like it left a bad taste in my mouth. It feel like I don't need to be here unless I get my paper up. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what you're trying to do I, while well, you're there. I would try, well, I see people doing hella fun shit. Like you just drink with champagne and like hang around with some badass. Like, oh well, yeah, I'm you're like, gonna need to be connected, or you're gonna like, have to have a bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was bagless. My bags were. They Miami were, ain't no fun without a bag. <laughs> you know, yeah, you really gotta. You really gotta. You know, you got a hand is, is sixty dollars at a at a club there. Yeah. Well, it's like little drink. You could go through G's doing nothing. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. You gotta be. Uh... No, in South Beach, I'm like fools is like coming down like with topless Lambos and shit. I was like. Oh. Yeah, we did all we do all that. We, yeah, yeah, we <laughs> did all that already. You know, like we really did that already. Like, not, and I'm not talking rentals. No, no, you know? no. Yeah. I'm talking about like, really, was like my team really I, did I'm, that. I'm from out here, but then I went there. I was like, oh, these fools is out here flossing down here. Like, oh my god. But then yeah, we gonna the call time, AR got, too. Yeah, give them a call. They got hoods down there too, though. Well, she is gone now. Oh, for real. What is it? Overtown. Oh, Overtown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Overtown. Overtown. I had more fun in Orlando. Why you want to Orlando? No, because I, I after I left, I nicknamed it Horlando. Because <laughs> it was crazy. Man, I was going down out Yo. there. Hey. Yo. Yo, what up? What's popping? Poppin', Got you live on Bloop Radio, bro. Yeah, it's Bloop Radio. That's oh, right. Yeah, what That's up, the what name up, Hey, what's what cracking? AR. Say? AR. Yeah, what's going on? All right, this is uh, three point oh. How you feeling, man? Feeling um hungry as shit right now. <laughs> that's what's up, bro? <laughs> hey, bro, we are gonna get you in here for an official in interview, like in person and stuff. But I want to ask you a quick question. Um, who has there ever been anybody that came out of Little Rock ever? Like, like in the hip hop, like who who threw down? Who did? Is there anybody out there rapping that you ever looked up to? No. Nah. Music was no nobody ever came out of Little Rock. Only people I know really came out of Little Rock was like the athletes, like Joe Johnson and Derek McFadden, and, mm -hmm. and um, then you had Jermaine Taylor at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, not really no artists came out of Little Rock. Uh, how are you being received by your by your city? What's up? Are they behind the movement? They know what's up. It's most definitely motivation for them and inspiration. You know, I get that all the time. Uh, um, I feel like everybody just, you know what it is. I was able to get out of Arkansas mm -hmm. and, and open my eyes to a different lifestyle. You feel me? I had more. I have. I got more content to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of my niggas in Little Rock, all they gonna rap about is what's around them, and right. and it's gonna it's gonna have that. You know how H Town got their way of 
slang and they wave yeah. you know like Atlanta got their slang well, Arkansas had their slang but Arkansas hmm. slang only really stay in Arkansas so yeah. I kind of stepped outside of that because I was able to move around and be like okay this what's going on over here this what's going on over there da, da, and I just whipped my own little formula that's what's up I uh yeah. quick quick question I know I'm like we turning this to an interview with you uh you got an album ready to go to like introduce the world to to you no I'm work, you I'm working, working on it working on a project right now called 13 mm-hmm. it should be ready within the next uh month and some change or whatever i'm taking my time on each each track and everything and making sure it's something that i personally want to ride to and listen to every song that's what's up like something you could just play through not just like a you play all segments. the way through man and i'm, I'm glad sure i'm glad to hear that yeah, yeah i'm, I'm trying to create a, um, a vibe and I want, I want you to be able to feel every song you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so Paint a picture in your own mind where when you ride, you can just kind of be there. That's what's up, man. Well, good yeah. talking to you, bro, man. I, I'm looking forward to meeting you one day in the future, man. Oh, uh, no, most definitely, man. Appreciate the call. For sure. I'll see you in a second, bro. <laughs> yes, right, sir. Bro, bro. All right, y'all. Yeah. Well, man, Shabazz, man. Nice to meet you, bro. Hey man, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show, <laughs> Thanks man. For, you know, uh, it's like Shaw was saying, uh before we close out, you was about to say something, sorry for cutting you off, but um we lost uh, we lost a uh, man, a powerful one in this um in this music industry just recently. I mean, people pass all the time, but then like certain like certain people got like, they got them superpowers and uh the P is gone. Made the um, soundtrack to my childhood. <sighs> Man, um, P. Yeah, Prodigy. Prodigy. Um, I seen some a clip of Master P talking about it over at the EBT Awards this morning. <laughs> Somebody showed me, and P, Master P said some real stuff. He was like, man, they like trying to switch up the program and let's do a dedication and all this stuff. But I actually posted up on my IG yesterday a list of like banned artists from BT that they had. And I want to read that right now to y'all. Let me see. Uh, this, uh, where are my glasses at? Look at my They're glasses. banned? They banned these artists at one point. It's, I don't know if it's still on. Uh, my Killer Mike video got banned uh, from BET. Cool, and then they cool, G, cool G Rap, Craig G, <laughs> MC Light. It don't make sense because it was she hosting her. This is from night. 2001. Listen, one? Buckshot, Cool Keith, A Tribe Called Quest, A Plus, J Rue, The Damager, The Licks. The Artifacts, AZ, Bad Seed, Bahamadia, The Brat, Goody Mob, Bones Thug and Thugs of Harmony, Black Moon, Method Man, E-40, Cannabis, Afura, Capadonna, Channel Live, uh, Coco Brothers, Freddie Fox, Jizza, LP, damn, LP, you made the list, bro. <laughs> DLC, Diamond D, Dead Press, De La Soul, MF Doom, Camp Low, Ghetto Boys, Brand Nubian, Boot Camp Click, <laughs> KRS One, Black Sheep, Raekwon, and Ahmad and Fourth Avenue Jones. Wow. Because, like I said before, there was an agenda, and they achieved the thing to where we are, where we are today. Because a lot of those artists on that list, I'd say probably like ninety something percent of those artists. We're dropping knowledge in their music. Yeah, but they ride too, Pac Dick. Pac, Pac told it. Pac told it the realest, man. You know what's crazy? I was watching a clip the other day, right? Right. And it was so disheartening. A, a rapper, a big rapper, mm. in today's rap society. No, I'm no, not even going to say. Not your name, Sam. He was being interviewed. And the lady asked him about the social injustices going on in our communities. I, I, saw, I saw this one yesterday. <laughs> what did he and, say? And asked, do you feel like the artists are responsible to speak about this? What did he say? He said, no. Leave that up to the critics and law enforcement. So she said, you don't think artists should say anything? No, you know, we don't need to get into that. We iced out. We having money. I know who you talking about. Now, so I listen to that, right? And 
People and, look up and, to and, him. And, people, and, look and up see, to that, people look up to that person. No, 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 no. Some, no, no. some see, people. This is the thing. Do. This, but, this, but, this is the thing. That's hmm? cool that they That's look cool. up. Yeah, I'm just. I'm not I'm into the whole that. big look up to. No, I know. I don't care about that. You don't care. They care that what he, that man had to say when he was asked that question. I don't care about who look up to who. Right, right, right. You respond. It's a level. See, like Charles Barkley used to say, and I feel like this. You don't make LeBron James your child's role model. You like don't. my kid, my son. I got a twenty year old son. Right. My son loves Kanye West. He loves Kendrick Lamar. But if you ask my son who his role model is, he gonna say me. You understand that? Better now. However, even though I'm not trying to be nobody else's kid's role model, I am responsible for what come out my mouth. Yeah. That was an irresponsible statement to make, bro. <sighs> in this time that we living in right now. Yeah. To say. Nah, nah, we nah. iced out. We having money. That's ridiculous. Yeah. We iced out. We having money. We? We having money. <laughs> we? Him Le- and his let, team. Let, 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 leave that to the other. Y- y'all talk about that. <sighs> we having money and iced out over here. Man. Y'all like, that really, that bothered me. Right. It you bothered know, me, and it's not about the children. It's did the way you, he really? said it too. It's like, not even the way he's. It's what he's. It's the fact that said. you said he was, that. He was happy as hell to say that shit too, though. He was. I don't know if he was happy or not. No, I seen the clip. He was smiling. Yeah, he you know, it. But I don't know if he was like, happy. I don't know if he was happy. I don't know if he was ashamed. I don't know if it was prepped. I don't know if he's been told somewhere down the line that you shouldn't get involved. I don't know what was the motivation for him to think it was cool to say that. Right. Maybe he's been told. By whomever. Mm-hmm. You understand? That he respects or looks up to that, hey, if you ever asked about these things, this is what you say. Right. That could very well be the case. Oh, shit. Doesn't make it correct or right, though. You follow what I'm saying? I would. There, you could so never, so you can't, like, more. I will say nothing before, you say before some I say fuck, some stupid some shit. Fuck shit. I will say nothing before I say something crazy. Because yeah. nothing ain't gonna uh, ain't gonna do nothing to yeah, nobody. Nah, that's bad. That's that bad. That's harmful. That's bad. That man came that's, with harmful shit. That's awful, yeah. man. That's uh. awful. Like, did you see Philando Castile's mother on the news? Did y'all see that? Yeah, I saw I, that yesterday. You saw it. Yep. You saw his mother. Yes. You saw his mom. Did you see that? I haven't seen People that. Know? You saw it. Yep. What happened? Like. His mother went on the news, bro, and is and, and and damn near in tears and like, listen, my son loved this city. Yeah, my son loved Minnesota. He loved this. He loved Minnesota. You know that he loved Minneapolis. Yeah. He has, like she said, one tattoo on his body, and it's of the Twin Cities. Oh man, he loved where he lived. You feel me, mm-hmm. dog? That that's 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 my mom. I was looking at. How can I how can I be an entertainer, bro? With a voice with that people any type of influence. How can I get on and get on a national platform and say I'm iced out, we having money. I don't talk about that. I don't care about Fernando Castillo's mom. That's crazy to me, bro. (laughs) Or his daughter, you know, crying. Come on, man. Like I don't even want to talk about that. I know, I mean, hey, what I'm gonna ask you this, Shabazz, OG. What can we do? I mean, honestly, what, all you what, can, what can we? What can we? Like, it's not at a, this it's, point, it, there is what no. Can we do? There is no solution. We got two minutes. There's here's the, no here's the solution. The solution is this: first and foremost, before you make any decisions, whether it's good or bad, that's going to affect your life. You ask yourself, "Is it worth my life?" Like you said, ask yourself that. Is it worth? Is it my worth life? my life? It's worth my life. You know what I'm saying? The second thing is this. We can't confuse what we want with what is. The reality of the situation is everybody not going to be saved. Everybody not going to do right. Everybody not going to make it. You know, the other fact of the matter is there is no what do we do? How do we fix it? Solution. The reality, the other reality is we're only responsible for ourselves. I can only change me. I can only change my thinking. Just like I said, when I spoke about the meek and game beef openly and directly towards game, I regret that. So now what I do going forward, I don't do that again. Right. I change me. I Police me. I monitor me and mine. If everybody be the change that they say they want to see, everything will get better. So what can people do to start? Stop saying, man, y'all need to stop this and y'all need to stop that. And What did you do today? Right. To rectify the issue. 
So if everybody is accountable, if everybody responsible from an eye perspective, right. then that's how you start to get to the change. Well, Shabazz, you change yourself. I'm on some change myself, three-point and shit. Show is on point. How will everyone else start changing? I can't worry about that. You can't worry about that? We can't. People worry about, we worry about things that we can't control too much. Just like people live in the future. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I like this girl. I really like this guy. Oh, yeah, well, well what's her five-year plan? Who cares? Life is fucked up. I got to worry about the next five minutes, the next five hours, the next five days that's not promised. It's okay to plan for your future, but don't live in it. People worry too much about what they have no control over. We don't have control over everyone. We only have control over our immediate circle, our children, ourselves. And to, to a certain degree, you don't have control over your children because everybody got free will. They're going to make sure. their own decisions. So if people just stop trying to figure out how to change everybody else. Mm -hmm. Focus on self. That's all you're accountable for. As long as you can look in the mirror, I'll always say this. As long as you can look in the mirror and say, I did what I was supposed to do, you can't worry about what he didn't do, what she didn't do, what Darren didn't do. I can't. Now if it in, enters into your circumference, into your circumstances, then you address it. But yep. I can't advance my thinking to worry about that. I hear you, man. I'm Well, the way I'm going to do is I'm going to do that, but then I, I just can't. I can't not. Help and worry about other people. I'm, I'm well, he he helping too. The tour, yeah. the tour. Everybody's yeah. got their version of outreach. I, Everybody my, has yeah. a gift. Mine's yeah. visual. Yours is lyrical. Yeah. Whatever his, it is, his is standing up and inspiring people. I came off Instagram know. and went in the street. Right, right, right. So nobody can't make me feel less of myself if I don't walk down the street with a sign <laughs> protesting. Yeah. I'm not doing that. It's not my style. I don't like sweating. I don't like my shit fucked up. I like to look good. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I don't want nobody to spit on me because it's going to go bad. Like, I, I stay in my bad. lane. Some people don't do what I do. All right, well, that's mm -hmm. true. Okay, I get and it. And I'm not going, I'm, I'm not it doing comes no down, marching. It comes down to that. I feel you. Do you. And everyone has their own version of doing them. I respect that. That's it, you know. I and don't have that. no guilt over who you couldn't save. I respect and this that. Person, that. I respect person. that, but for him, like, he's like, I can't get out there in the streets, bro. I, I'm gonna get out the streets. And that's yeah, that's perfect. That's, me. that's yeah, why we that's need both me. of y'all so yeah, bad. Exactly. That's, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. If the clothes come out the laundry, they dry. Somebody got to iron them. You don't like the iron. You wash them, you dry them. Shit, I'll I was iron born them. to iron. Give me that shit. I love <laughs> iron. I have to go in my Zen space. Iron. You know it. what I'm saying? There's something. You for, cook. Yeah, yeah. I do the dishes. Yeah. yeah. I eat. You good? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And if that's our agreement, if yeah. we know, if you eat, he cook. I do dishes. We know you can't. We know you don't. You I burn everything. Like cleaning, I burn everything. And you burn up all the food. We cool with you eating because we'll 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 let you help some other way. You'll yeah. cut the grass. Yeah. It's cool. We're yeah. gonna wrap this up with this. Like uh, that's I was how team having works. a deep discussion with my, my brother, the Grouch. We was in Maui working. But they're on kicking us out. Album. Basically, kicking us out of here. We're getting kicked out. The he producers like listen. I was all fed up. the OG shit. He it's time this. to go. He says, "Do you?" And that's what we're going to do. And uh, take care out there. Be safe, y'all. Thanks for listening. You do you. I do me. When we together, we do us. Episode 11, Bloop for the History Books. Personally, my favorite episode. Y'all have a good one. We out. Peace. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all.